Okay, so we've almost gone through all the Venus Vashtas. Now there is a, a Vashta that is called Shobita, and that means basically like agitated, okay? And so whenever a planet is conjunct the sun, it is said to get agitated. And also, um, whenever it's with a cruel planet uh, aspecting, that is also an enemy. So um, this can, for Venus, this can happen when Venus is with the sun, and then it can happen when the waning moon is aspecting or with Venus. Um, sorry, when the waning moon is just aspecting. But if it's with Venus, it's still starving. So you'll find that there is some overlap here, uh, and you'll don't let that mix you up. Just you know, like when you learn all these together, you can blend them, and you can you trust me, you'll just get it. You know what I mean? But there is a little bit of overlap. So Venus agitated, when Venus is with the sun, it is um, starved, but also agitated. And uh, you can kind of pay, you know, even more attention to this agitated Avashta. So Venus being in Leo, in any Varga, it's starved by the sun in that Varga and not doing well. But then when it's with the sun, what I said about the starvation is still true, but then also this agitation, what I'm saying is true. And really, the thing about the uh, Venus when it's agitated by the sun, so what's that about? Basically, again, sun represents like this part of you that's more of like your pure, your pure self, the thing that's trying to, you know, create your destiny and create this kingdom, the connection to your higher self. These are all the sun, the solar qualities. Venus is about, again, about enjoying life on planet Earth. So these are very, very different energies, really. You know, like the sun is the king in the chariot up there lighting up the world and making the heavens. And how can he do that job and stay on track and rise every single day when he's got, you know, if he's got Venus all over him, like these two women, babes, booze, drinks, whatever. Um, he can't, he can't, you know, chariot his kingdom. So the sun is an enemy, sees Venus as his enemy. So this is actually a placement that's not good for the sun as well. But then from Venus's standpoint, she doesn't like that either because she's trying to enjoy life and the sun's up here just, you know, storming about and um, agitating her with his heat. You know what I mean? And his, um, you know, hot-headedness, we could say. So when Venus is with the sun, and particularly if the sun is stronger, like it's, it's in Aries or something, you know, well, actually, then it's exalted, so it's not... Uh, when it's a planet's exalted, it's not going to create as much of the bad karma. Um, but, you know, you say you get like Venus when it's not in a great Avashta. Venus and Cancer with the sun there. That would show this. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of cases, um, use every other technique you know to judge the strength of these planets. But basically, when Venus is agitated by the sun, these per people that they respect, like uh, authorities or these like alpha type people in their life, um, these solar figures will agitate them and basically like not be meaning to, but just be their life makes it so that the Venus person feels incompatible. And that's actually another Avashta. I don't want to distract too much, but this is also called Kopi Avashta in the deep Tati Avashas, which literally means like incompatible and out of step with something. And so that's another way you can look at this. <clears throat> And whenever any planet's with the sun, it feels incompatible. The sun just has too high of standards. The sun is like, I am perfect. No one can be as good as me. You know what I mean? So any planet at its but that's with it feels that frustration of that feeling or that agitation. So they can, uh, this person with this uh, placement can attract experiences them to them to them where they're like talked down to a lot more, where they're belittled. You know. Um, for the choices they make or the way they live their lifestyle or how they, you know, enjoy the comforts of their life. Um, you know, Venus is vehicles. You want a certain vehicle that you like and you identify with and you go to work and your boss just like makes fun of it or something and criticizes it or just says like an offhand really, you know, dismissive remark about it. And it hurts your feelings if you have this. If you don't have this, you forget it instantly probably. But there's that weird thing about karma where, um, you know, we we attract certain people and situations in our lives to play these roles. So if you have the Savastya, you might attract weird authoritarian situations in your relationships. Um, and that can cause some frustration. 
So agitation is more of like a psychological frustration if we had to dis if I had to describe how it's different from the starvation. It's you're agitated. There's some nervous solar fire and heat energy that, that you're having to work through. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, so like people that, uh, you know, who you love, your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever, you, when you have this people you respect in your life will give you a hard time about that or, you know, just say you shouldn't be with them or this or that sort of thing. Um, authorities might intimidate someone. I'm getting a lot of text messages. This must be... That's a good omen. It must be good information. Um, authorities will, you know, will tend to like pressure the person in a weird way that psychologically pressures them, makes them less likely to want to do what they want to do, basically. Um, the Yeah, that's probably all I need to say about that. So then um, now let's talk about the waning moon. When Venus is uh, aspected by a waning moon, it's a cruel moon. Now, of course, it doesn't get that cruel till it's getting really dark. When the moon is like just past full, it's not that cruel. You know, the sages say that as the moon gets waxing, it gets brighter and fuller. And as it goes waning, it gets uh, and empties out, it becomes crueler. Um, so when you have a waning moon aspect in your Venus, you kind of want the relationship, again, just like the starving, the moon starvation we talked about, you want the relationship to be all about you, but you just put more psychological like uh, strain on it, you know what I mean? And you agitate the person more with maybe subtle remarks, passive, aggressive remarks, um, the thing like, uh, the waning, see the moon is waning and there, there's a with the waning moon things are slowly taking away and so one feels that like god my love just isn't it needs to be growing every day but it's shrinking or they think that or they just see that more and so they put more pressure psychological pressure on the relationship and then that can obviously short circuit it or you know over overwhelm the person and they just want to leave you know what i mean the relationship so that's a tough thing um person can want to have like that perfect fit for them and their ego, which can become borderline fantasy and delusion when you have that this agitation, depending on how bad it is in the rest of the chart. Um, but it's like trying to find that specialness and romantic connection. There's really something about um, about that where if you try too hard to force that, love can never be coerced. You know, like Meher Baba says that quote: uh, "Love and coercion will never go hand in hand." You know what I mean? Um, and tr for true love to foster you cannot have anything being forced or coerced of any sort in any way whatsoever. And so this can kind of like make the ego want that or want or start to do that more. And so that can that can actually hurt love more than it helps. And so the person trying to get more of their needs fulfilled ends up getting less. Um, so if you have that, keep that in mind in relationships. Um, it's very common. Um, and if you think about life and situations, that's something that comes up a lot. So those are the two ways that Venus can be agitated. And again, this does overlap a lot with the starvation. And so it, even if you can't really tell the difference, that's okay. If you can even say any of these things to the person, there's a, you know, probably three-fourths of the time they're going to be really impressed with what you have to say, to be honest. These avashas are great. And again, these are so great for filling in little details and nuances of human life. And uh, human life is very complex, so we should have a lot of complicated things. Um, the next, I'm not going to do a video about uh, when Venus is thirsty, because really that is just, uh, okay, so that's another avashta, is Venus being trishta, I think I'm saying that right, I, don't, I can't remember, um, tr uh, trishta or trishita uh, is the avashta where a planet is thirsty. Um, and, you know, that one is just basically the same thing happening, but when it's in a water sign. So when a planet's aspected by an enemy and there is, when a planet's being aspect from an enemy and there's no other gentle planet aspecting and it's in a water sign, it is said to be thirsty. So it's not starving, it's thirsty. So it's like, okay, I can function, I can be comfortable or... I can function, but I'm not super comfortable, basically. You know, like when you're really thirsty... You're uncomfortable and you're not really happy or delighted like the other avashtas, but you're still able to work and produce and do things. So it's different from feeling starred where you feel like you really aren't able to do something because of a problem. So that happens whenever...
like say Venus is in uh, Scorpio, where it doesn't have a, a dignity, um, and then it is aspected by the moon and there's no other friend like mercury or saturn aren't uh, or no other gentle friendly planet is aspecting which result which is only mercury in this case in that sense uh venus would be starved um sorry thirsty <laughs> yeah Whew. these avashas can be confusing and it takes a long time to get them all under your belt but they really are great i use them constantly but like this thirsty one, I don't use a lot, you know, it's, uh, it just comes up in the middle and it's more of a middle ground thing. So I'm not going to make a whole video about it. Um, but I hope that helps you understand that. And so if you see Venus, even in Scorpio, you can speak to this Avashta a lot of the time. Um, or even if it's exalted, it could still uh, have a thirsty quality going on. Of course, that would be less important than the exaltation. I would override it. So keep in mind these different avashtas, some can overpower others depending on, you know, dignity and other factors. And that is how life is. Um, sometimes you are overpowering another figure, and then a month later that figure overpowers you, you know, or the next year or whatever. And that's the thing is the Parashara system is which has these avashas in it is really amazing for like i've said before it's more of a lunar subjective nakshatra based system and so it shows all these ups and downs the subjective ups and downs in our consciousness and what's growing and not growing and things like that and then the jaimini system is much more solar rashi based um and objective and just says like what they'll do but doesn't necessarily say all these little fine print details Okay, so only one more Vashta to go, the proud Garvita Vashta Venus, and that's the, one of the best ones, probably, the, yeah, the best one. And so I saved it for last, and I'm actually really happy that I'm going to get to do all these while Venus, before Venus goes direct tomorrow. Okay, thanks you guys. Take care.